Hey there, everyone. My name is Bob Harrison. I'm the Director of Sales with Ethosource Office Furniture. Today, I'm thrilled to be discussing the return to the office with Joe Vitarello of Perna Frederick in Philadelphia. Hey there, Joe. Bob, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for taking some time to answer some questions here for me and uh, get your feedback on getting back to the office post COVID-19. Well, I'm a little jealous. You're uh, sitting with the office uh, behind you and I'm um sitting from my house at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Looks can be deceiving. It's a green screen. Yep, absolutely. Joe, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your company? Yes, my name is Joe Vitarello from Perna Frederick Commercial Real Estate. We are a boutique commercial office leasing company located in Center City, Philadelphia. We specialize in assisting businesses on all of their real estate needs. Predominantly, our work is, is based in Center City, uh, but we also do and handle services in the entire region. And we are really excited, Bob, to have uh, people back to the office and back into their work environment, which you know is a little bit about what we're going to be talking about today. Absolutely. I'm so excited for it as well. So can you give us a bit of a recap as to where the market was, the real estate market was, uh, before all this hit in March? Uh, where you think it is now and how it's impacting you? Sure. Uh, Philadelphia was uh, very healthy and strong all through 2019 uh, from the commercial side, um, also you know, residentially as well. Uh, and in the beginning of the year, the first quarter, there may have been a small you know, slowdown from the fire that was 2019, uh, but it was definitely healthy. Uh, buildings, you know, across all sectors, class A, B, and C properties, all were, you know, 90% or more occupied, um, mm -hmm. really healthy to landlords, uh, but also give enough of the playroom for tenants to find existing space uh, that they can retrofit and, and grow their companies into. So prior to March, Philadelphia was doing excellent. The rental rates were um, continuously increasing um, quarter after quarter after quarter. Uh, and then March hits and there is, you know, I, I don't want to call it a shutdown, but there was a, a certainly a pause. And I think we're slowly but surely getting out of that pause now uh, where tenants are beginning and landlords are beginning to uh, move towards uh, completion of lease negotiations or renewal negotiations that uh, may have been on, on hold for a small portion of time. Got it. So you've seen it pick back up here in the last few weeks. Is that since the ability for you to start showings again, uh, you know, on a legal speaking? Um, yes. Yes. Uh, as we move towards the yellow phase, uh, we also had uh, uh, from Governor Wolf all throughout, you know, all different types of businesses, there was a structure of how and, and uh, guidelines as to how you could um, manage your business moving forward in person. And uh, we were sent those guidelines. So yes, we are able to show space again. We are able to get out and meet with tenants and, and uh, you know, it's still cautious and we're still being, you know, always wearing a mask and, and, uh, you know, you're not handshaking at the beginning and end of a business meeting. I Elbow bump. Right, exactly. Or a little fist bump or, uh, you know, a, a nice hello. Uh, but yes, things are starting to pick up. I think people now understand that there, there is going to be a, a light at the end of the tunnel. I agree. I agree. So are deals that were in the works prior to COVID-19 being modified to accommodate post-pandemic considerations? Uh, I would say that, that there has been some legal language that I, I've seen inserted in a number of uh, leases, and then I'm actually working on a sale transaction for a user-specific building, um, that there were some COVID-19, uh, I want to say, language details that really um, were specific to that um, item because you don't know if you're going to be able to get the information flowing as quickly as you were, you know, prior to right. March. Uh, you know, is, is the government office that you need open? You know, it, those documents able to be obtained uh, in, an, in an easy manner? Um, 
you're able to schedule appointments, um, whether it be those site visits, uh, uh, architects, contractors, all of those things. Now, the other thing on the leasing side that really was was pushed, and I think you know there was a big pause on was the construction. Once the construction portion of the end result of a lease, then we get to uh, the architecture portion, the construction portion, and then of course, you know, your end, Bob, the, the furniture, you know, portion and the installation, um, that construction area was paused for a while, which, you know, created leases that may have been beginning in June or July or August to now be pushed. Of course, a lot of the pause, a lot of the leases. Exactly. And there's legal language in leases that, that pertain to substantial completion. And mm -hmm. there was, the, there was a, a lot of uh, uh, legal review in terms of, you know, force majeure. And does that take precedent because of what's happening in the world? You know, a lot of that conversation, a lot of those conversations happen. Interesting. Yeah. Liability in the post COVID world. A lot of, Correct. a lot of considerations to, uh, to, to think about. Right. So, are you aware of tenants who are currently in a space requesting building ownership to provide accommodations to their space or in common areas, lobbies, places like that? Uh, I've, I've seen a number of my tenants that I represent ask uh, questions of building management. What are their plans? What are their implementations? What, what do they expect when they do bring all of the employees back to the office? Um, will you be able to get into the elevator with 10 people or will it be, you know, two or will there be a number? Um, you know, will, will the restrooms be in, uh, more often throughout the day, have a porter as opposed to just the night crew? Um, you know, questions like that absolutely have, have come up. Um, what are the, the security, you know, risks and questions and, and, uh, guest policies. So I, I've seen a lot of questions of building management. Inside your own specific space, I think each tenant has to do what they feel comfortable with. If they need to install furniture items or um, what you've seen in, I guess, uh, you know, when you go to the grocery store where you have a plastic barrier between you and the employee, I guess that all depends on how tightly wrapped each and it has their employees. Are they in private offices or are they in workstations? Are they benching? You know, I think everybody has to look at their overall plan where, you know, their, their employees are comfortable. So the deals you're working on currently, um, are any of them now seeing a, a different footprint with more offices or, or is it about the same? Well, uh, as you know, you know, you've done a lot of the, the furniture layouts. We've worked together in the past many times. Um, there was a big push for open, you know, collaborative workspace. Uh, I can't say during this time frame that there was any, you know, architecture plans that were created that said that's off the table um, and we can't go to that. I think there's some more thinking and, uh, you know, really trying to understand what is best for all of the employees um, and, and maybe a little bit more preparation before just putting a plan out, you know? Um, so maybe some of that is, is occurring, but no, I, I haven't, I haven't seen, you know, anything that, that says that that would change um, currently, but you know, that's going to be something that I guess we'll see in the, in the very near future as some of these, these uh, construction projects get back underway and, um, space plans get put together and furniture plans get put together. So there's still a lot that we just don't know. Um, so what do you think happens with the square foot per employee ratio? You know, the average is let's say 150 to 250 square feet per employee. What does that look like going forward? So that, that could increase. Um, one of the things that I think we've all seen uh, over the last few months is literature that discusses people working from home. Um, a little bit more of that 
space at, at a home project versus being in the office all the time. At the same time, I think we've see, heard and seen other people who say, that's not the way that we work. We want people to come back to the office. We want to work together. We want to be collaborative. Um, we don't want to hear everybody's kids screaming in the background on the Zoom calls. Uh, you know, it's just, it's not as productive, um, whatever it may be. You know, there's, there's a million reasons why that works for some people and doesn't work for other I, others. I guess that depends on what type of business you're in. Um, for all of the people that we've heard that say that they would like to work from home, I've also heard the same amount that can't wait to get back or more that I can't wait to get back and right. myself. I love working out of an office yeah. uh, camaraderie with the people that I work with talking through different things that have happened in the business world in, you know, Philadelphia, real estate, whatever, you know, whatever is the topic of the day. And I, you know, we can bounce questions off of each other easier, uh, discuss each other's experiences of what's happening um, at the moment or in the past on something that's up on projects that we work on. Um, so to get back to your, to, to answering your actual question about the square footage for every employee that I think may be able to work from home for an extra day or two or whatever that may be, you may have to spread some people out as well. So those collaborative workspaces may now be pushed an extra couple feet away from each other. Right. They want a little bigger kitchen to spread out with, with two coffee pots you know, or whatever that, that looks like so that everyone's not, you know, literally on top of each other. Um, right. You know, I think, you know, I, I'm working through, through this uh, time frame, um, March, April, May, I was working with a company that, you know, very much works that way. Uh, workstation after workstation after workstation, you know, very tight knit group. They work in teams of five, 10, uh, you know, I don't think more than 10, but, they're actually expanding and it's not a large expansion, but it's an expansion that basically assists them moving people into a more comfortable position when they get back to the office. And that's expected to be, you know, let's call it August for argument's sake. Um, and both the employer and the employees feel better that they will have this couple thousand extra square feet that maybe a portion of it was already needed prior to right. March, and then another portion of it was needed because of what has happened. Agreed. So basically an increase in square foot per employee allows that company for, for instance, to feel safe in their return to the office. Correct. So how will social distancing carry over into the amount of square footage a company takes? Kind of built on this previous question, but yeah, it's uh. You know, again, again, I guess it's it's each individual company has to assess that themselves, right? So, a, a, an attorney's office that has the attorney sitting outside with a um, paralegal, and then uh, you know another support staff member. You know, maybe they're already positioned in that way that they don't need to you know increase their footage. Um, but you still have hallway space, and as I said, or conference rooms and and uh, kitchen areas and just places of meeting. Uh, um, you know, I could see in your office, you have some, some places where, you know, a couple of employees can sit down and collaborate on a little round table, or maybe it's bears facing each other. You know, that may need to spread out a little bit now. Um, you know, or maybe you put that down the hall, or maybe that's, you can't go to the coffee shop anymore. At least right now you can, but you will be able to. Awesome. Um, but, Right. Um, so, you know, I guess, I guess a lot of this is wait and see. And when you get back, your employees will, 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 will tell you, or you will feel whether this is comfortable or not comfortable. Right. I think, you know, each, each outing that all of us has looks and feels different than the last one and the last one and the last one, you know, April was a very tense, touchy time for, I think all of America. Uh, I think we are slowly but surely moving into a little bit more comfortable positions, whether it be a grocery store or, you know, there's only a few places you can go, you know, maybe it's Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever, but um, pretty soon that will be opening up in both, you know, New Jersey, uh, Pennsylvania, New York, all of the, you know, the Northeast states. Yep. Yep. So big picture. 
What's the state of the market today? Uh, state of the market today is, you know, a little bit of a holding pattern um, until we, you know, really get full force back into the office. But I can say for Philadelphia specific, um, it was very strong and we don't see companies and I don't hear of companies, you know, closing shop and saying we don't need our offices anymore. There may be a tightening of that in some ways. And as I said in, before, there may be a square footage increase in other ways. I guess that, you know, it's going to depend on which companies can work from home, which ones can't. Um, but, you know, we feel, I think as a, as a company, we've had many of conference calls about, you know, different things that we're hearing from our clients and all the people that we work with, both on the landlord side and the tenant side. And we all feel that this is a blip on the screen as opposed to, you know, a, a, a halt of office space. We don't, none of us feel that. I don't think all of us, uh, I think all of us are still working through maybe during this time frame they were more time sensitive as opposed to you know just an open format of of leases uh but now we're feeling the pace and the you know being picked up a little bit that's tremendous so where do you think the market will be six months from now the market i, I you know it in in my eyes, I believe it stabilizes. Um, you know, I, you may you may have a little you know change in in the square footage that's available, or you might not have as much um, as expansion as there was prior to, just because some companies are going through some modifications economically over the last months. I mean, you know, they need to get back on their feet. They they lost some revenue. Other companies are doing really well and 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 actually thrived through this time frame. So, you know, we see so many different sectors of businesses. It's hard to point, you know, in, 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 and and put it all into one answer there. But I, you know, Philadelphia, I see it stabilizing. Um, will rents continue to climb? You know, that may not be the case. Right. Maybe there's a leveling off of that uh, for a short period of time. You would think as companies would have to take a higher footprint potentially that they would probably be a decrease in rates potentially. That's all demand, you know, um, it's, it's supply and demand driven. Uh, and then also there's some other factors, of course, that we could get into a long lease about that, which we don't, you know, want to get into here, but there are, you know, length of lease term and construction, you know, uh, and tenant improvement dollars that go into that free rent, you know, there's all of those other factors. So, that's a tough, you know, question to answer on that um, one topic. But yeah, there, that could be that, that could be the case. Um, each lease, in and of itself, is a different negotiation. You know, based on each client. Yeah. Makes sense. Well, thank you, thank you very much for taking the time to to answer these questions. You know, I think we're all eager to get back to the office, get back to work, get out of quarantine, and get back to some form of normal. So I appreciate your insight. I really do. It's always great talking to you. Absolutely. Thanks for being a, you know, a, a very trusted vendor uh, with us and helping our clients. And, uh, you know, I look forward to a continued relationship with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, Bob. Thank you.